Hi guys, uh, so today's tutorial is on AWS CloudFront. Before starting this tutorial, make sure that um, you like our channel and also subscribe our channel. The link, you can find it just below at the right side of this video. Let's look into what we have today in the CloudFront. So what's in it for you? We would be covering up the concept of what is AWS, what was earlier uh, before AWS CloudFront, after AWS CloudFront, what were the services that were introduced, how it benefited, what do we mean by AWS CloudFront, benefits of the using AWS CloudFront, and how AWS CloudFront actually is known as a content delivery service, the name of the companies that are using AWS CloudFront, and we would be covering up one live demo. Now, AWS is the Amazon Web Services. It's a cloud service provider that basically offers a multiple services, variety of services, such as uh, compute power, database storage, networking, and other resources so that you can uh, create your solutions on the cloud and help the business grow. Now, with AWS, you only pay for whatever the services you use. So, for example, if you are using a service for a couple of hours, then you pay for only that many hours that you have used that service. Before AWS uh, CloudFront, so there is an example that we are going to talk, and that is uh, you must be aware of an application called Spotify. So when you used to access Spotify and uh, when you click on it, it kept on loading and uh, at the end you used to get the error. And the error was that the connection failed. And why you received that error? Because of a latency issue, probably a network error, right? So how you can solve these kind of a latency issues and that is also going to, these kind of an issues are also going to impact the performance of an application. So with the introduction of AWS CloudFront, this problem of loading the application got resolved. So after AWS CloudFront, with the help of AWS CloudFront, Spotify gives the facility of updating new features, access to million songs that you can access instantly. So with the use of AWS CloudFront, the latency issues were solved and successfully you can basically access your application. Now, what we mean by AWS CloudFront? So AWS CloudFront is a globally distributed network that is offered by AWS, Amazon Web Services, which securely delivers content to the end users across any geography with a higher transfer speed and an improved or a low latency. Now, what are the benefits of AWS CloudFront? There are multiple benefits. One is the cost effective. So it helps you to do the cost optimization when you use the CloudFront. It is time saving so it is implemented easily and also a lot of issues with respect to accessing the application uh, with respect to latency and all can be resolved content privacy so the content is placed to the end users and also to the cloudfront servers in a secured manner in a secured way it is highly programmable and you can make the changes, amend the changes on the fly and you can target any location, any geography across the globe. Along with that, it helps you to get the content deliver quickly. Now, how AWS CloudFront delivers the content? Let's look into the architecture. So, this is a flow and the flow is with respect to how the user is going to get a content from the CloudFront. Now, the client first access a website by typing a url on the browser and in the step one it acts, tries to access the application then the client requests when the website is open the client requests for an object to download such as for example a particular file now at that time the dns routes user request to download that file to aws cloudfront the aws cloudfront connects to the nearest edge locations. Edge locations are basically the servers where it caches the files, documents and the web codes. AWS CloudFront connects to its nearest edge location in order to serve the user the request. At edge location, AWS CloudFront looks for its requested cache file. Once the file is found, let's say if the file is available in the cache of an edge location, AWS CloudFront then sends the file to the user. Otherwise, if the file is not found in the cache memory of an edge location, AWS CloudFront compares the requirement with the specification 
and share it with a respected server that means a web server or a server where the file is actually available the server the web server responds to the edge location by sending the file back to the cloudfront edge location and then as soon as the aws cloudfront receives the file it shares with the client also adds the file to the cache of an edge location for a future reference this is how the flow of a cloudfront is now the name of the companies that are using the aws cloudfront so one of them is uh, geo7 uh, app which is a, which is a very popular app so it uses amazon cloudfront to deliver 15 petabytes of audio and video to its uh, subscribers globally which is a huge data sky news uh, it uses the service in order to unify the content for faster distribution to subscribers or uh, the discovery communications uh, also uses the cloudfront it uses the service for delivering api static asset and also the dynamic content and then uh, the tv1 eu streaming europe uh, is basically also uses uh, the cloudfront service that helps in improving latency and performance that results in fastest delivery of content now let's look into the demo how to use cloudfront to serve private s3 bucket as a website now i'm going to run a cloudfront distribution demo on the aws console and uh, we we'll basically try to deliver the content from a private s3 bucket and then map that with the domain name using the route 53 service so what we need for this demo we would need a domain url we would need a route 53 service we would need cloudfront uh, we have to create a cloudfront distribution and that will be linked with our s3 bucket the private s3 bucket right and in the s3 bucket we would have uh, one html file the index.html file so let's uh, move into aws console so right now i have opened up the cloudfront distribution and here you can see uh, that couple of distributions have already been created so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a distribution now there are two types of delivery method for your content one is the web distribution and the other one is rtmp rtmp stands for real time audio or video distribution it's basically used for distribution of a media content or a media file which are available in the s3 bucket here we are going to select a web distribution because primarily we will be using files which uses protocols http or the https so you have to click on get started and in the origin domain name you have to specify the bucket where your code is available so i have a bucket already created here you can see and what you need to do is you have to create a bucket with the url name or the domain name which you would be mapping with the route 53 service so this is a bucket that has already been created let me show you in a new tab so here you have to go to the storage under the storage uh, you have to select the s3 bucket let's open the link in the new tab and let's look into uh, how we can create the s3 buckets now here are a couple of buckets already created i have created one bucket with the domain name that i am going to use and map it with the route 53 service so that is uh, basically mapped to a region which is in ohio and if you open up this bucket here you will find an html web page the index.html has been already added right so similarly you have to create a bucket with a domain and an index.html page needs to be uploaded there now again we'll go to the cloud front we'll try to create a distribution just have to click on create distribution select a web delivery method select an origin domain which is sunshinelearning.in and uh, origin path you don't have to specify origin id is this one so basically when you define an origin domain name automatically the origin id appears you can customize this origin id as per your requirement also so rest of the things primarily we keep it as a default settings only until and unless if we require some customized settings to be done so let's say if you have to change the cache behavior settings you can do that otherwise we'll keep it as default 
Now in the distribution setting, uh, you can either select use all edge locations for the best performance. So what does AWS uh, basically do here? It uses all the edge locations uh, which are associated with AWS across the globe. Otherwise, you can specify based on the regions also, right? Apart from that, if you want to enable firewalls or the access control list, you can specify here. And then um, what you need to do is in the default root object here, you have to specify your index.html page, which is in the S3 bucket. The distribution state has to be enabled. And if you want to use IP version six as well, you need to enable it. Click on create a distribution. Now you, you can see here, a distribution has been created. It's in progress and it is enabled. And it takes around 15 to 20 minutes to get that distribution completed. The reason is that the web codes, the web pages will be distributed across all the edge locations across the globe. So hence it takes time to get that done, right? Anyway, let's move on to Route 53 service and uh, let's create the hosted zones. So we'll type uh, Route 53 here, scalable DNS and domain name registration. And what we are going to do here is we are going to map our URL, the domains um, pointed to the name servers that will be provided by the route 53. So we have to create a hosted zone. Let's wait for it. So now the route 53 dashboard is open and uh, you can see one hosted zone is already created. So just click on the hosted zone. And in order to point the traffic from the external domains towards the AWS, you have to first point the domains traffic to the uh, hosted zone in the route 53. So I'll click on create hosted zone. But before that, I will first delete the existing one. And then I'll uh, create another record, another hosted zone. Right. Put your domain name. Let's say I put as sunshinelearning.in and it is acting as a public hosted zone. The rest of the things will be default. Click on create hosted zone. Now it gives you four name servers and these four name servers has to be updated in the domain. So you have to update these name servers in a platform from where you have purchased the domain, right? So this is half of the work done then what you need to do is you have to go and create records. Now in the records, you can select a routing policy. So right now what we are targeting, we are targeting basically that the traffic from the domain should be pointed directly towards the CloudFront distribution. Hence, we are going with a simple routing right now. Click on next. Here you have to specify the record sets. So we are going to create the records. Uh, just click on defined simple record put here as worldwide web and you have to select an endpoint. So endpoint we are selecting for the CloudFront distribution. So we have to specify alias for the CloudFront distribution. Now here we are going to put uh, the CloudFront distribution URL and uh, then we are going to define the simple record set. So what we need is we need a CloudFront distribution URL, which you can find it uh, from the CloudFront service itself. And uh, you can find uh, the domain name here itself. You just have to copy that and then paste it here in the distribution. And then just uh, click on define simple records. Again, click on create records. And here you can see the record set has been updated. Now this domain is basically pointed towards these name servers, which are further pointed towards the CloudFront distribution, right? Now, the only thing which is left is that within the domain uh, from wherever you have purchased the domain, you should update these four name servers. And then you can see the live traffic coming on this domain will have an output from the CloudFront distribution. That's it from us guys. Uh, thanks for watching our video.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.